For our third lesson in Module 9, we're going to be looking at properties of rotations. So, so far we've looked at translations, we've looked at reflections, and we've looked at our third type of, we've looked at our third type of transformation today called rotations. And our goal with this lesson is to understand the properties of rotations and be able to apply a rotation rule to a pre-image pre -image to find an image. As with the other two lessons, we'll start with some terminology. And the definition for rotation is a transformation that turns a figure around a given point. This point that the figure is turned around is called the center of rotation. One thing I want you guys to note is that the pre-image and the image are congruent, meaning that they're the same size and shape, but the orientation is going to be different. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. For our first example, we have triangle KRN and our directions tell us to rotate the figure 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. What I want you to do is take a moment, pause the video, copy down the graph, then resume the video for some further instructions. Alright, so you should have by this time copy down the graph so what I want you to do is I want you to put your graph paper perfectly straight up and down on your desk or on your table and I want you to place your finger right at the origin. Place your finger right at the origin right here and press down pretty hard so that you press the hold the paper firmly against your desk. And with your other hand I want you to then turn the paper one quarter turn going clockwise going in this direction. Okay, turn the entire sheet of paper one quarter turn. That's the same thing as a 90 degrees clockwise rotation. A quarter turn is 90 degrees. A half turn is 180 degrees. Three quarters of a turn is 270 degrees. And then a full turn would be a full 360 degrees rotation. All right, but you should have your paper now rotated or turned one quarter turn. Look at where your points for point K, R, and N, R right now. You'll see that those points started off in the second quadrant, but now if we reorient it to where our x-axis and our y-axis are now sort of flip-flopped, we'll see that the figure is now in quadrant 1. So again, this would be easier to show if I could show you on pencil and paper, but it's not working on my iPad. So, you're taking the figure or you're taking your paper and you're turning the entire paper one quarter turn clockwise. That's again going in this direction. So a quarter turn. Taking the figure, rotating it one quarter turn this way. Now when we make that quarter turn with our paper, we recognize that point R prime is now going to be at point two comma one. Okay, originally R is that negative 1 comma 2 our prime however is going to be at 2 comma 1 and so that's where our r prime is going to go likewise with point k the original coordinates for that are negative 3 comma 4 so negative 3 comma 4 for point k when we rotate it however k prime is going to be at 4 comma 3 so that's where we're going to place our point for k prime. Finally, we go on to point n, whose original coordinates are at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So negative 6, comma 1. And then when we rotate it, n prime is going to end up at 1, comma 6. So n prime is going to end up up here. Then once we've got our points drawn, Go ahead and connect our lines. And we see how triangle K prime, R prime, N prime is a rotation of triangle K, R, N. So rotations are not quite as straightforward as translations and reflections might be. Translations and reflections, I would say, are pretty easy to do on technology and communicate over technology. However, with rotations, I think we're much better off doing these with pencil and paper 
so that we can actually go ahead and spin the paper and identify where the coordinates will be once we've spun the paper. And then we can remember where the coordinates are supposed to go, spin the paper back, and still place them in the correct location. We should note that when we rotate around the origin, which we are going to be doing for this for the, for the entire lesson, when we rotate about the origin, there is a very clear relationship between the coordinates of the original point and the image of the point. Again, going back to r and r prime, for r we have negative 1 comma 2, and for r prime we have 2 comma 1. So the points are related, we just have to recognize what the relationship is between the points. Let's look at a couple more examples and hopefully we'll get a better understanding of how to use rules to rotate figures. For a second example, we're given triangle LMN and told to rotate the figure 180 degrees about the origin. So again, the origin is going to be your center of rotation. Our 180 degrees is going to be how far we're going to rotate it. That's going to be a half turn. And we don't have a direction. We're not given it cl clockwise or counterclockwise here because when it's 180 degrees, it actually does not matter. If you go 180 degrees clockwise or if you go 180 degrees counterclockwise, either way, you end up in the same place. So go ahead and take a moment, copy down the graph, copy down the figure, and then once you have the figure copied down, press down at the origin, rotate your paper a half turn until the Y, the y of your coordinate grid, this Y should be down here, and this X should be over here. That's how you know you've rotated 180 degrees. Once you've rotated 180 degrees, Look at the coordinates of your points in your triangle. See where they're at once you make the rotation. Remember where they should be, and then rotate the paper back to where you had it originally. By now, you've hopefully played around with the graph a little bit. Turn the graph halfway to see where your image of your triangle should be. So let's start with point L. The coordinates of point L, which we have right here, is going to be 4, 4. And so when we rotate that 180 degrees, we're going to end up at negative 4, negative 4. Which is going to be right here. So we're going to put our L prime at that point. For M prime, we recognize the coordinates for point M as 5 comma negative 1. So for M prime, the coordinates are going to be negative 5 comma positive 1. And we end up with M prime being right there. And lastly, we look at N. Coordinates for N are 2 comma 3. So the coordinates for N prime are going to be negative 2 comma negative 3. giving us our point right there. So that will be n prime. Now that we've got our points all rotated, we can go ahead, draw a line, connecting the dots. And again, you guys need to make sure that you are using rulers to draw your axes and to draw the lines of your shape. Let's take a look at one more. For our last example, we are given quadrilateral M-A-T-H, and we're told to rotate the figure 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. So for counterclockwise, we're going to be spinning it back this way, 90 degrees. So a quarter turn counterclockwise. So the top of your paper is going to go to the left. The bottom of your paper is going to go to the right. You're still pressing down on the origin and spinning the paper a quarter turn, but this time your quarter turn goes to the left. Take a moment and copy down the graph, make your spin, and see where you observe the points to end up after your quarter turn. Starting with point M, we see the coordinates of point M are 1, 4, and when we do a quarter turn to the left, when we do a quarter turn counterclockwise, we see that our point is going to end up at negative 4, 1. Now here's where using different colors really comes in 
handy because we're e able to more easily distinguish the points difference between point M prime and H because it's in black I know that this point refers to point H and because this is in brown I realize that M prime is for that point there so there is going to be some overlap with this problem which we have to be okay with because the original figure surrounds the origin and since we're rotating about the origin our image is also going to surround the origin so there's going to be some overlap here but again we start with point M at 1 comma 4 we rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise and we end up with M prime at negative 4 comma 1 now we move on and do the same thing with point A point A is at the coordinates 5 comma negative 2 and when we rotate that 90 degrees counterclockwise, we end up at we end up at 2 comma 5. And again, using different colors helps because now I know that A prime is that brown point there. Next, we move on to point T. Originally, point T is at the co coordinates 0 comma negative 3. And when we rotate at 90 degrees counterclockwise, T prime ends up at at 3 comma 0. And I label that point T prime. So one more point to go for point H. Point H originally starts off at negative two comma one, and when we rotate ninety degrees counterclockwise, we end up at negative one comma negative two. So again, labeling it H prime. And now that we've got all of our prime points, we go ahead and connect those with straight lines to form our new quadrilateral, which should look something like that. And your figures should look much better than mine. I'm trying to do this on a tablet with the stylus. You guys are doing this on graph paper with a ruler so that all of your lines should be perfectly straight. Now, I'll be honest, this lesson is a difficult lesson to teach on a video using an iPad. We'll take a, we'll take a look at one or two more examples on the board for bell work tomorrow just to make sure that we have a better understanding of exactly how to apply rules for rotations to a pre-image to get the figure of the new image. I'm hopeful that after watching this video you have a better understanding of the properties of rotations and that you are able to apply a rotation rule to a pre-image to find an image. Write down any questions or comments concerns that you might have so that we can go over those together in class.